Columbia, Houston, good morning, and a special good morning to Japan's real Ultraman, Takao Doi. Hello, Houston. Thank you very much uh, for waking us with uh, a great song. Uh, last night, we were watching M76. Um, yeah, M78 in, in the Lion uh, constellation where Ultraman came from. Thank you very much. Copy that, and I hope that music uh, helped everybody wake up this morning because we have good news for you. You are go for an EVA, and today is going to be a bit busy in preparation for clearing the plate for tomorrow, and in the morning you'll have VGS ops, and in the afternoon Winston and Takao will have a chance to finish the EDFT and also a chance for air cam. So it's going to be a good couple of days. That's a great way to wake up there, Chris. We're all for it. Would you like to make some opening remarks before we uh, begin questions? Sure. Uh, welcome aboard Columbia. Uh, the, I'm Kevin Kriegel, the commander, and this is my crew of SCS-87 that I'm proud to uh, bring before you. We're on the, the United States Microgravity Payload 4. It's been a highly successful for the United States Microgravity 4 payload. The experiments are really uh, working well. Uh, of course, uh, we did have a uh, glitch at the beginning of the mission where uh, we had a problem with the Spartan satellite. We're not really sure of the whole facts of that, but uh, luckily, uh, due to the hard work of the folks on the ground and the crew here, we put together a plan and uh, I think put together a, a pretty spectacular grab and retrieval of the Spartan. And then tomorrow, we're going to uh, go out and do another uh, spacewalk where we're going to evaluate some more of the tools that they did at the end of the first spacewalk that were going to be used on the International Space Station. Uh, we also have on board the Ukrainian, collaborative Ukrainian experiment that uh, Colonel Leonid Kanenyuk has been working on, and it's been going quite well. So we've had a very long and uh, somewhat eventful 13 days, and we're looking forward to your questions. This is Sue Butler for the Associated Press for Captain Scott. How important do you consider this second EVA and the testing of this crane. How crucial do you think it is this test for the future of the space station? Are you just a little bit worried that the crane won't work as advertised? Do you think it's snake bit since it couldn't be tested a year ago because of the stuck hatch? As a matter of fact, we had a very successful test of the crane during the first EVA. What we did not do was to get a chance to exercise all of the options. What we're going to do this time is just expand the uh, knowledge base that we gained the first time. The crane actually operates very, very smoothly. It's meeting uh, most of our expectations. I say most because uh, there's a little bit of flexibility in the boom that we didn't quite anticipate. But uh, that's, you know, there are certain things ought to be, uh, to be expected. That's, nothing's going to be 100%. What we're going to do tomorrow, very briefly, is to operate the crane using our small ORU, our small carrier, and just expand on the uh, information we got the other day. But actually, we think the crane is working quite well. Do you have confidence that the Americans can successfully complete more than 1,150 EVAs in the first year based on what you've seen so far? I'm sorry, I'm hesitating just a little bit. I'm not sure I, I caught the full meaning of your question. I think uh, if you're talking about the construction, the assembly of the space station and the number of EVAs that we're going to have to do, oh, yes, there's no doubt in my mind that we're going to be able to handle that workload. We are gearing up in terms of the number of uh, EVA experienced people. We have the equipment, the uh, uh, ISS tools and procedures are coming along very rapidly, and I think we're ready to go build a space station starting with 88 next year. And one follow-up for Karpana Chavla, please. Would you please explain, since we haven't heard any your own words, what happened, what this glitch was that Kevin Craigle referred to when you deployed the Spartan and it failed to pirate, and then you tried to grab it. Was it a signal you sent Spartan that did not re receive for some reason, or was the signal not sent? We don't really know. When we deploy Spartan and we release Spartan 
from the arm, we look at it for a while, and it's supposed to do a yaw maneuver, and we did not see it do that. Uh, Bill Harwood with CBS News. Well, let me just follow that up just very briefly for Dr. Chavla. Um, to the best of your memory, and I realize that, that there's still troubleshooting, and you guys will be talking about this on the ground to, to figure out exactly what happened, but to the best of your memory, did you uh, send all of the required commands pre-deploy to the satellite, uh, yes or no? Yes, we think we sent all the commands that need to be sent to the satellite. Okay, a question for Steve Lindsay, I guess. Uh, looking ahead to Air Cam Sprint, uh, I'm not sure how much time that will be remaining in the EVA for the Air Cam Sprint test. I know that originally you all were hoping for 30 minutes. Is that pretty much what you're expecting now? And I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering if everything goes well, trying to get a feel for how high above the bay the camera might ultimately get. I mean, do you have any ideas along those lines? Yeah, the, uh, right now in the timeline, the sprint is timeline for about the same amount of time as it was on the first EVA originally. As far as how high up above the bay we're going to go with it, it'll kind of depend on how much time we have. The, uh, the flight envelope goes to 160 feet. Whether we take it that high or not will depend. Uh, that's just kind of a secondary objective. Our primary objective is to test the flying qualities of this at a somewhat lower altitude. So we'll be flying uh, just above the uh, payload bay most of the time doing a lot of engineering evaluations, some flying quality evaluations, and as well as uh, doing some uh, simulated uh, space station type tasks where we'll be observing and evaluating an EVA crew member at work and trying to use the camera views to help assist them in their work. Uh, this is Phil Chen of Earth News for KC, a rather esoteric question. When you were growing up in India, did you get to, uh, did your village have one of the chicken wire antennas to view the ATS-6 satellite, uh, which NASA had launched uh, uh, way back then, and uh, did that help influence you in your career as uh, becoming an aerospace engineer and eventually an astronaut? I'm not from a village, first of all. Uh, but that's okay. It's a small town. Yes, we did have the chicken wire antennas, and uh, I was already quite old when those antennas came to our town, so I didn't really get to watch uh, much of the space program-related events till much, much later. And I understand uh, from your family that they're fourth-generation vegetarians, so I'm wondering uh, how your Thanksgiving dinner was. Uh, what did you do with your turkey dinner, and how good was uh, the beans and, and uh, rice dinner that you had? Oh, it was very good. Uh, you know, you get used to the food you eat, so you don't really know what you are missing out, I guess. Okay, and uh, when you were pulling back with the RMS uh, um, after the Spartan attempt to uh, grab it after the pirouette didn't work, uh, when did you first realize uh, that uh, it went into a tumble? Uh, what was your reaction then? Did you think that you might have had something to do with uh, that tip-off rate, or uh, um, did you suspect that it was the RMS that was malfunctioning? And can you lead us through that process? Yeah, it all uh, seemed uh, to go real fast. Uh, after uh, I moved the arm back, I thought uh, maybe Spartan was doing its maneuver that it was supposed to do earlier, and that was uh, really my immediate reaction. Rehan from the Time Magazine. The question is for the mission commander, and it comes from my editors in New York who are, uh, want to send along their congratulations on a spectacular mission. But uh, in that uh, uh, crew of yours, all high achievers, uh, all of them uh, highly qualified, most of them pilots and even a windsurfer among you, their question is, uh, is there a poet among you, and uh, is anyone, one of you, going to write a bit of poetry about this mission, or how it feels to float around out there, please? I really wish we could. I know we're all poets at heart and enjoy poetry. Uh, in fact, uh, KC has uh, tried to get us all together and write our own uh, poetry, but not to a whole lot of success. Uh, Takao is... Uh, doing some drawing for his uh, home country of Japan. So uh, we have certain talents. Uh, unfortunately, poetry is, is not one of them. 
This is Sue Butler again for the Associated Press. I don't want to appear to be picking on Dr. Chavala, but are you fairly or unfairly blaming yourself for the mishap when you try to catch a Spartan again? And does this put just a little damper on your first space flight? You know, we are here on a very long mission. It's a 16-day mission, and uh, there are tasks for every day, scheduled first thing in the morning to the end of the day. And you simply do not have time to delve on yesterdays because you have to finish the whole mission properly. So I think once we get back to Earth, we will have uh, a lot of time to talk about this, and that's when I really plan to do that. Bill Harwood again for Winston Scott, uh, again for AirCam. Uh, would you walk us through briefly uh, uh, how that process works? You're obviously going to be standing there on the foot restraint, I guess, and simply release it into space. But uh, would you just describe the test procedure that happens and then recapturing it and taking it back inside? Well, yes, at least I'll describe my part of it. Uh, quite a bit of the test procedure will be done by Steve from inside the cabin. But what I'm going to do is retrieve the spreads from the uh, airlock, and I'll... Uh, uh, make my way up to the uh, foot restraint, mount myself in the foot restraint. Once I've done that, I'll simply power it on, and I'll look for a light sequence, a sequence of, of five flashing lights that tell me the power-up went real well, and everything's working properly. Then when Steve gives me the go, I'll rotate it. It has to be rotated about one or more axes to perform another self-test. When we get the indication that that self-test is complete, the three flashing lights, I'll just stand by. Steve will go through a, a series of uh, tests and checks from his console inside. When he gives me the word, I'll simply release it, sit back and watch, and uh, catch it uh, once the flight is over. Uh, again, I'll release it. When Steve's done, he will pilot it back to my location. I'll reach out and grab it, and put a tether on it, power it down, and uh, that will be the end of uh, what we anticipate being a very successful flight. Uh, this is Phil Chen again for KC. Uh, uh, let me try twisting uh, everybody's favorite question around a little bit. Uh, do you feel a little bit like uh, the silly Sibley of, uh, with everybody pointing their fingers at you and um, uh, second guessing and accusing you of uh, causing all the mistakes and everything even before your mission's over? Oh, I don't know what that first name means or what uh, what you said there, and I didn't know everybody was pointing fingers at me too now. So there. I would like to ask the commander, uh, Mr. Krieger, uh, since this is uh, an international mission, uh, do you find any difficulties in communicating each other among uh, crews? No, actually, this crew, was, you know, we've been working together for over a year, so uh, we know how to communicate, whether it's in English or sign language or, or just... Uh, a small glance, uh, so communication is really not a problem. 